Hey everybody, this is Jason Ostrowski and welcome to another edition of the Everything Real Estate Podcast. This week's going to be a good one because for many of us, when it comes to social media, um, some of us know what we're doing, some of us think we know what we're doing, and others know they have no idea of what they're doing. So this week's guest is here to help us with our social media. She is the founder of the Get Social Smart Academy, the author of the best-selling book, Get Social Smart, and she is the CEO of Katie Lance Consulting. It is the social media expertise of Katie Lance that we will be learning this week. Katie is awesome. Uh, she is is very engaging. She has very good tips and strategies to get your social media on point, and uh, she's just a lot of fun to interview and to be around. So this week, our special guest is Katie Lance. I hope this will be very beneficial to your business. We'll give you some good strategies moving forward here for your social media, and let's talk on the other side. But for now, here is my interview with Katie Lance. Before literally we get on online here today, I'm yeah. watching you know all your YouTube videos right now. I've listened to some of your podcasts, and I have to say I am probably one of the the most <laughs> most uh, I guess guilty and one of the biggest offenders of social media. Um, I guess not to dos in your book, and so I want to get into that today, and I want to make a full confession in front of you that I, I need your help. So um, it's so all good. That. It's all good. <laughs> so let, so let's, let's dive right into it. Uh, the first question that I, I have for you is, you know, if I'm a brand new agent or maybe even ex, an experienced agent who is reluctant to embrace social media and that platform, where do I start in order to best build my real estate brand online right now? Good question. That's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very broad question. I right, guess. right. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a few things. I, I would say sometimes, you know, when we think of social media, we think of it as this thing of like, oh my gosh, I have to do this. And, and there's a little bit of reluctancy or just overwhelm because social media changes all the time. And what was true today, you know, was not true five or 10 years ago. And so it can just, it can just feel very overwhelming, especially if you didn't necessarily grow up with social media, uh, which, you know, myself included, you know, Facebook was not around when I was in college and that's probably a good thing. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I think one of the things I'd recommend is to, to think about social media as one other way to communicate, you know, one other way to communicate with your past clients and your prospects. Uh, you know, I will often, uh, you know, remind agents and brokers when it comes to other parts of their business, like getting on the phone or sending emails or thank you cards, you know, we often don't think about it. We just do it because it's part of our business. But sometimes with social media, it becomes this thing where we just kind of like bolt it on to our business, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I just encourage people to think about how can you integrate it into what you're already doing. And a great place to start is, is really just being on some of those platforms, especially Facebook right now. Facebook is still, I think, the, the number one social media platform for most folks. I would say follow pretty closely by Instagram, but just being on those platforms. And even if you're not posting a whole lot, it's, it's a, a great place to start is just being on there and engaging with other people, seeing what other people are posting, you know, being really intentional as far as connecting and commenting with other people. I would say, don't be a drive-by liker, you know, don't just mm -hmm. hop on and like 12 things and then leave. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I think the, the beautiful part about social media, especially for real estate is real estate's a people business. Real estate's a relationship business. So, you know, building those relationships by, you know, being intentional, engaging with people, wishing people a happy birthday, connecting with people on that personal level, that's a great place to start. And then we can always add on the other stuff, you know, promoting your listings and building your brand and, and creating content and, and all that kind of advanced stuff. But I think a lot of it starts with just being social. That's the first part of social media is being social. Yeah. And I guess I, it's funny when, when I sit back and think about it, I'm like an old man when it comes to like social media, you know, and, and what's going on today, because we can get into the realm of TikTok and in the realm of Snapchat and all these other platforms that seem so overwhelming and so daunting to a lot of real estate agents uh, when they're in the midst of doing their business. How do they find time? Because it can feel like a, a whole nother career, 
is yeah. posting to your social media. So what would be some simple tri- you know, tips or strategies where maybe not set it and forget it, but like you had just mentioned, um, you know, just don't be a drive-by liker, like start out with something simple and go from there. So yeah. from a personal branding standpoint, you know, how do we synergize our personal brand across different platforms easily? You know, how, how do we do, yeah. I guess, I guess, how do we do it as easy as we can without taking up too much time? Well, I think there's a, there's a few things. So just to kind of unpack that a little bit, because mm-hmm. there's a lot, a lot in, in that. Yes. I think first mm-hmm. of all, it starts with thinking about what your brand is all about, you know, and, and obviously, you know, depending on um, who you are, who, you know, as, as you listen to this, I know a lot of folks are part of the great Berkshire Hathaway Home Services brand, which is awesome. Um, but then, you know, you're, you're, you're also your own brand, right? And so I know that word kind of gets tossed around a whole lot, but I do think that it's important for any agent or broker to really think about the kind of people they, they want to work with, who are the people they want to attract, who are the people they don't want to work with, right? What, mm-hmm. you know, and just kind of doing a little bit of that, I would say heavy lifting as far as what is your brand all about, right? And then I would also say, look to see where your clients are hanging out and your prospects. And if you don't know, if, you know one thing I'd recommend is send an email to your database. And you could say something like, hey, you know, we're, we're working on our social media plan. We want to serve you better. Where are you spending time? Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, none of the above, right? <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a great, that's a great place to start to get a sense of where people are. Because I don't think as an agent or broker, you have to be everywhere. I think it makes sense to pick a few places that you enjoy hanging out, that, you, that your clients and, and prospects are hanging out, um, you know, and, and then you go from there and you can always increase uh, or decrease, you know, as, as things progress. The other quick tip that I'll, I'll just share just to add one more thing onto, onto your question um, one great thing that a lot of people I, I recommend doing is time blocking. So if social media is something that's a little bit new to you, or maybe you're just like overwhelmed because you go on Facebook and it just feels like a big waste of time or, or, you know, TikTok can suck you in, you know, 20 minutes and all of a sudden you all, you've, all you've done is watch fun videos. <laughs> so <laughs> what I recommend is, is, is time block your schedule a little bit, you know, 15 or 20 minutes every day uh, to comment, to engage, to not be that drive by liker. And then you might also uh, time block maybe 30 or 40 minutes once a week to schedule some of your content and to create maybe a little bit of your content. And I'm sure we'll get into more content in a minute, but that time blocking, I think can really help just from a strategic uh, point of view. I think that's a great idea because it doesn't get to be overwhelming. If you set that time aside People can actually just have it on their calendar. It's 15 minutes. It's not that long, um, but it can be invaluable to your business. So that's a great idea. Um, What do you think is right now the most underutilized or undervalued social social media tool that people are using? Um, I know... I know for me, like stories, right? I, I'm still getting in the habit of doing stories all the time instead of posting to my feed. Um, you know, I know you mentioned Facebook Live a lot. So in your opinion, what is, what is undervalued right now in real estate? There's probably three things, if I can touch on three, that I think sure, are, are sure. undervalued right now. So two of which you mentioned, Facebook Live for sure. You know, Facebook Live is nothing new. It's been around for a while, but still the number one piece of content that gets the highest level of engagement, hands down, is Facebook Live because it's live. It's in the moment. People watch the replay. And, you know, typically a Facebook Live is going to get anywhere between 90 to 95% more engagement than anything else that you post on Facebook. So Facebook Live for sure. We're seeing a lot of agents and brokers, especially over the last few months, do a lot of virtual live open houses, which has been a great way to drive traffic to their open houses, build their business, attract business. But also Facebook Lives where they're interviewing other people, they're highlighting local businesses. Some of the greatest Facebook Lives I've seen over the last few months are agents and brokers shining the light on other folks in their community, other small business owners. So that's number one. The second thing, as you mentioned, Jason, there's stories, Instagram stories and Facebook stories. Facebook stories tend to get a little buried uh, because a lot of people just focus on Instagram stories, but both of those platforms are great, a great way to kind of take people behind the scenes. So instead of posting a bunch of times a day on your feed, maybe post once a day on your feed or a couple times a week on your feed, but you post daily on your stories. It's like kind of that, that story behind the story, you know, that sort of behind the scenes. It's a great way to build that know, like, and trust factor. Um, and then the third area that I think is really underutilized, this might be surprising, and that's LinkedIn. Um, mm. You know, link, LinkedIn is one of those platforms that's not as fun as Facebook <laughs> or Instagram, but it's really 
one of the only, if not the only professional network, um, social network online right now. And instead of it just being a place to, you know, connect with people and, and, and things like that, it's a, it's a great place to build your business, to show, showcase your expertise, especially if you're in a leadership role. We're seeing a lot of great managers and brokers who are not just talking about real estate, but they are, you know, really um, just just show, showing their expertise, you know, on LinkedIn and connecting with people, especially C-level executives who are not hanging out on Facebook. LinkedIn's a great uh, underutilized asset. <laughs> you know, LinkedIn is always one of those sneaky spaces, I think, for, for real estate agents and for managers. It's like yeah. every once in a while, I'm like, I'll just pop on there. And I see, yeah. like you said, it's, it's very <laughs> widely... Uh, distributed that it's it's usually for business, right? But but we do see or I see some agents like pop up on there with with stuff or or managers to your point uh, pop up on there, and I'm like, you know what? I need to start using LinkedIn more, and then I always forget to do it, and so you know <laughs> I need to I need to be better with that myself. So you know we we mentioned the stories. And I think the biggest thing for me with stories, and this is going to be the question that you get asked, I'm sure, the most. I think you even referenced that this is the question that you get asked the most, (laughs) is how do we find that elusive original content? And one of the things that you said that I liked was, you know, look at your life as content. And you mentioned the behind the scenes stuff. So can you just expound on that a little bit more? How do we get that great content? Yeah, I mean, especially with stories, I, I I do believe in looking at your life as content. I can tell you've seen my videos because I say that a lot <laughs> in mm-hmm. a lot of my videos, you know. Yep. Um, and especially as you're out and about, and and maybe you know, even these days we're we're not as out and about, but you could get inspired by a movie you see or something your kids say or something. I mean, for me, it's like something crazy my cat does. Like you, when you start to sort of looking at, look at your life as content, you'll you'll realize that gosh, there's there's lots of things that you can share. And it doesn't mean you have to share every moment of your life, but you know, it goes back to that relatability factor. I mean, people do business with people with they, that they know, like, and trust and relate to. And so, you know, I think sometimes when it comes to content, a lot of agents will try to look elsewhere for content. You know, I'll get emails saying, do you have content? You know, can I share content? Do you have a content service? And honestly, you know, this, this isn't the, probably the answer a lot of people want to hear, but the best content is the content that comes from you, the content that you create. So I'll give you a quick example. If you want to share something funny, instead of, you know, instead of Googling like funny joke, funny meme, there's lots of generic kind of funny jokes or funny memes that are out there. What if you just shared something funny from your own life? You know, mm-hmm. it, I, I mean, I, I can tell you, you know, I've shared a couple of sort of self-deprecating <laughs> stories of my kids or, you know, things that have happened. And I think when you open yourself up a little bit and you're a little bit vulnerable, it's not always all about business. People are like, I like her or I like him. Or they don't, and that's okay too. That's the beautiful part about kind of putting yourself out there a little bit. You'll have people who are attracted to who you are and they want to do business with you because they feel like they know you. And then there's some people who won't, and that's okay too. So I think that original content is key. I think it starts with just kind of looking at your own life as content. But then to take it a step further, one of the things we've tried to do is put out original content week in and week out through video content, podcast content, blog content. I know for a lot of agents, you're not going to do all of that, but you know, at a minimum, starting to, to put out some of your own content that is somewhat timeless, right? Content like, you know, three tips for moving or how to declutter or how to become a first time home buyer. That type of content, even though it may not be, you know, groundbreaking, earth shattering, it's important, it's relevant, and it's in your voice. So it's great content for social media, and it's also great content when you're having those one-to-one conversations with people, and you can say, oh, and in addition, here's a link to a video I did about that. It just helps to build your credibility. Yeah, and and you mentioned in there, I think the term that you would use, or maybe I'm wrong, is evergreen content, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so can you kind of give the definition of evergreen content and what that means? Yes. Um, so I know when it comes to real estate, obviously some content is is not evergreen. It's not, you know, there's some things, especially around what's happening in the market, what's happening right now, that stuff is timely and it's going to change, but there's certain things that are evergreen, meaning they're timeless. So they're relevant, not just today, but they're relevant three, six, 12 months from now. And this, I feel like is kind of the secret sauce when it comes to really like the longevity of social media. So we really made the decision a few years ago, instead of thinking about like brand new things to post each and every day, like, is there a piece of pillar content we could put out each and every week that was timeless, that was relevant, 
And then could we kind of slice and dice it and repurpose it? So now we have a piece of content that works on Facebook, but also YouTube and LinkedIn and Instagram. And we can kind of stretch out the life of one piece of content versus always feeling like we're reinventing the wheel. So a great place to start, I always recommend if agents have never done this, is to like take out a piece of paper, take out a pen, and just start to brainstorm and write down questions you get asked all the time. What are the questions, the topics of conversation? If you think about the last, you know, maybe five or six clients you've worked with or prospects, what are the topics of conversation that came up? And anytime I do this exercise, you know, usually agents will start writing, you know, the first couple of times they're like, I don't know, I don't know. And then all of a sudden it's like 20 ideas, 30 Mm -hmm. ideas. And guess what? That could be 20 or 30 pieces of content, right? 20 or 30 short videos that over the course of time, you know, when you publish those on a regular basis, it builds your credibility. It's a great piece of content. It helps attract the people you want to work with. And that's, it's really a win-win. Yeah, it, absolutely. And, you know, one thing that I've seen through this, this period of time with COVID and, you know, unfortunately all the bad things that have happened from it, but one of the good things I, I, I think the takeaway is, is that people are getting more used to being on video, right? Yes. Whether it's on yeah. Zoom calls, they're, they're <laughs> starting to feel more comfortable in front of the camera. They yeah. also realize that you don't have to be a perfectionist in yeah. order to get media content out there. It's, it's about doing it, right? You can yeah. screw up and it can still be great <laughs> content. I mean, I do yes. it. I try and do it every day. Um, <laughs> you know, so one of the, the video content sites that I, I really like is, is YouTube, right? So, um, I do think from a real estate perspective, at least from from where we are in the country, that it is undervalued, that YouTube channel that you can create. So what do you say to those agents who don't like to be on camera, but maybe they should be looking towards a YouTube channel? What do you, you know, what do you recommend when it comes to a YouTube channel? Yeah, I mean, I think in, in general, when it comes to video, a lot of a lot of people, it's very common, uh, you know, they'll say things I don't like, like, oh, I don't like how I look, I don't like how I sound, I don't know how to do video, and then they don't do it, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I had a good friend of mine a few years ago, very lovingly remind me, she was like, Katie, that's how you look. <laughs> And that's how you sound. So you got to get over it. Yeah. So I will lovingly tell anyone watching today, if you need that push, uh, that's, it's a small, you know, it, it definitely makes a big difference. Like that's how you look, that's how you sound. And the only way you get better at doing video is you do video, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if you can actually get over the part, part of the fact that the first few videos you do will probably be pretty bad. All right. <laughs> like mm-hmm. you won't be looking at the camera, your angle is going to be off. Like I probably won't be able to hear you. Like, and you just kind of have to get through that. It's just like when you first became a realtor, you might have been licensed, but you didn't really know what you were doing until you worked exactly. with a few clients. Yeah. You know, it's mm-hmm. like anything. So I think that's the first thing. And one tip I would give anyone before they even think about YouTube is just to get comfortable on camera. A great way to get comfortable on camera is to start by creating videos with your phone that you just send to one other person. So it's this idea of like one-to-one video. So maybe, you know, it's like me sending a video to you or me sending a video to my mom or my neighbor or my client just saying, hey, I was thinking about you. You know, I I want to see how you're doing. I hope all is well. Or maybe you send a happy birthday video through text or Facebook Messenger. And that does two things. First of all, the other person's like, wow, that was really awesome. (laughs) Thank you Mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. But secondly, it just helps you get comfortable like looking at yourself on camera. It just helps you get through that process. So I would say that's first and foremost. The other part of your question, I do think YouTube is really, really relevant from, you know, a number of, you know, a number of things. YouTube is the number two search engine in the world. It's owned by Google and YouTube works very differently than Facebook. You know, when we try to figure something out, you and I, I mean, you're probably like me, if I need to figure something out, like my instinct is like, go to Google, right? How do I dot, dot, dot. And YouTube is typically, you know, top few YouTube videos are one of the first things that pop up. Where it was Facebook, we don't really go to Facebook to search videos. Facebook's more like, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm at Starbucks. Oh, there's a video. I'll watch it, right? Both are important. They're just different how people interact with them. So I would say for anyone already, if you're already doing some video content or you're doing Facebook Live content, you can download that, put that up on YouTube. YouTube is definitely a great place to get that traction. Um, And even if you're at the beginning stages, I definitely would encourage you to start thinking about YouTube you, it, it's really the long tail game. It takes time to gain traction on YouTube, but just like anything else, consistency makes a big difference. Yeah. And, and YouTube for me, I mean, I'm, I'm, we're doing this podcast and I'm sitting with Katie Lance right now. The, the, <laughs> the way that I learned how to do this was through YouTube was through, and I know, you know, him, Pat Flynn. 
Yes. And, um, you know, I just watch Pat Flynn's videos like nonstop and it just, <laughs> he's it, a genius. it just, yeah, he's, he's amazing. He's amazing. Right. But yeah. I wouldn't have known, uh, how to do any of this if I didn't have YouTube. And so I think YouTube can just play such an important part and a different part for agents that are, are looking to, to branch out and build their brand in different places. Um, wow. you know, we talked about a little bit about Facebook Live, but can we talk a little bit about Facebook community pages too, and maybe uh-huh. starting one of them and how to use them to your advantage? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think you, you you probably mean face like community groups, right? Like Facebook yes. groups. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, one of the things Mark Zuckerberg talked about earlier this year might have been the end of last year is he talked a lot about the Facebook algorithm. There's, you know, Facebook algorithms always been in the, the news of, you know, why is my content not getting seen? And, and we've all sort of felt that pain of posting something and like, we get one like, two likes, one of them's your mom, right? You're like, what's going on? And so Facebook prioritizes content. This is according to Mark Zuckerberg. They are prioritizing content right now that sparks a conversation, which is why Facebook Live, as we said earlier, is one of the best types of content to put on Facebook because it sparks a conversation. Well, right below that or kind of parallel to that conversation are Facebook groups. And so we're seeing a lot of agents and brokers, especially those who maybe they're not at the beginning stages of Facebook or social media, but they're more kind of in that middle of like, okay, I've been on social media for a while. I've got a personal profile. I've got a business page. I'm doing a little bit of ads. Like what else could I be doing? And so the opportunity to run a local Facebook group, kind of like YouTube, it is a long game, right? You can't just expect to like start a Facebook group and like get a bunch of listings tomorrow. Like you really got to be in it for the long haul. But it can be a really great way to connect with others in your community, you know, where you bring in other business owners or other, you know, local local leaders. And it's become it becomes a place not just for you to pitch yourself, but for you to kind of be the facilitator of like, you know, kind of showing that you're the, this, this kind of digital leader uh, in your community. And we've seen this, especially with everything this year going on with, you know, with, with the pandemic. We've had some people inside of our academy who had, had already been running Facebook groups. I had one uh, friend of mine text me. He's like, holy cow. He's, he's like, my business is on fire. And all of it's coming from my local Facebook group that he runs. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's, it's, it's really great to hear that. So it's, you know, again, it, it, it takes time to build, but I think especially when you can, you know, like I said, bring in other folks inside of your group and really be that local resource, highlight other businesses. Um, it can it can really be beneficial in, in the long run. Yeah, I you know, I've yet to start a Facebook group, but I always think about, you know, what are my interests? What are my hobbies, right? Maybe I could start something based on that and then work, obviously, you know, your business into it uh, over yeah. time. And I see that done a lot. And there's there's some local groups where I'm just extremely jealous of the people that have started them <laughs> because it was like, oh, my God, why didn't I have that idea? You know, yeah. Um, you also mentioned that, you know, there, there are certain companies out there that can post automatically for you, right? Mm-hmm. And you said that's one of your kind of no-nos. I mean, it's okay <laughs> to do it, but don't forget to post content yourself. And don't fall yeah. into that trap as a realtor of just posting, you know, some automated article that's going to come up and new listings, you know? Yeah. So can you speak on that a little bit more? I mean, you already kind of did where you said like, you know, you have content that you're getting two likes, right? I always, <laughs> I always look at the reaction to my posts and, and I kind of adjust accordingly. Right. Yeah. But, um, you know, can you speak to the auto, the automation of everything is easy to fall into. Yeah. So, you know, is it as simple as blocking off that time and making sure that you still post original content? Yeah, it's it's a good question. I mean, there definitely are some, some companies out there that offer you know automation and, and content, and and I'm not necessarily opposed to smart automation. I think that there's some great tools out there that will help in, in in a smart way. I also don't think there's anything wrong with scheduling some you know pieces of content, especially when we think about repurposing some of our content, as you know, as I talked about earlier. But I, I think we just want to be really careful. You know, I think really these days our level at just as humans of, of seeing like what's real, what's authentic, what's not. I just feel like that's like at an all time high, you know? And if, you know, you and I are friends on Facebook and then I see you post something that's like clearly doesn't sound like it's from you. It just feels like a really big disconnect. And so I do think it's better to post less, but to post more quality pieces of content 
that are in your voice that are, you know, that, that where I can hear you, I can see you, you know, that, that have your opinion where I can say, Oh, that's Jason. Yeah. Like I get that, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I just think that's, that's so important because otherwise it just feels like the lights are on, but nobody's home, yes. you know? Yes. And it just, there's like that disconnect. So I just, I would really caution people. I know it's easy to say, okay, check, I checked the box. I did it. I did the social media, but that's not really, it's, that's not going to do anything for you, honestly, in the long run, if that's all you're doing. Yeah. And I do think you need to, to check your insights on your posts, right? Um, yeah. You know, I think that's important. Um, is there a best practice or is there some tips for people that are boosting posts that are paying money? Is, is there a good tip or strategy? You know, maybe it's your radius, maybe it's your demographics. How do you best hit, I guess, a target audience uh, using, let's, let's start with Facebook or, or Instagram. Sure. Yeah. So Facebook advertising has, has changed quite a bit, as you probably know, you know, um, in the U S now, when it comes to Facebook ads, um, real estate's considered a special ad category, um, just like finance or, you know, any mortgage ads or anything to do with credit. So, you know, Facebook ads and boosting used to be kind of the wild, wild west. Like we could just like spend money and like target whoever we wanted to. And Mm -hmm. like a lot of folks are having a lot of trouble getting any of their boosts or ads approved because of that. So um, just two things I'll mention. The, the first thing I think in terms of boosting, boosting is a great place to start when it comes to Facebook ads. I was just chatting with someone the other day and she's like, I, she's like, I feel like boosting is like the training wheels for Facebook ads. I was like, oh, I love that analogy. It totally mm-hmm. is. Like some people will say, don't boost, but that's a great place to start. Start with five, 10, $20 your ad may or may not get approved because you're just boosting it. And, and you know, there's not all these little nuances that you can do um, versus a Facebook ad, but it's a great place to start, especially if you've already got a post that's already getting a little bit of traction, you know, mm-hmm. or maybe you want to, you've got an open house and you've promised your, your client that you would, you know, run a Facebook ad. That's a, that's a great place to start. Right. But really for a long-term ad strategy, you really want to, I encourage people to look at, at Facebook's ad manager um, and within Facebook's ad manager, which is for anybody listening, if you've never explored that, it's just facebook.com slash ads, facebook.com slash ads. When you go in there and you, and you start to place an ad, really the first thing it'll say is, is this a special ad category? <laughs> and mm-hmm. yes, real estate is. So you have to click yes. And what that does is it sort of automatically takes out some of your targeting options. And that's so you're in compliance with fair housing. Um, you can still do some targeting, but like I said, it's not really the, the wild, wild west <laughs> of, mm-hmm. of back in the day. So we're actually seeing agents and brokers who are having success with Facebook ads, but instead of just like the one ad here, one ad here, they're, they're really thinking of a more long-term approach where they're doing things like they're running video ads and then they're retargeting people who are watching their videos to other other ads that they're running or they've got a Facebook pixel on their site and they're retargeting people who've already been to their site and they're retargeting them with ads. So I know for some people it can feel really overwhelming. That's why I always say start with boosting. <laughs> it's a great place yeah, to I start. Mean, we're, we're getting into <laughs> pixels and everything. And, and yet, you, you know, and, and I always think about that for, for what I'm doing, right? I'm like, I'm on the cusp of like getting into that. And then I like back off. Cause I'm like, Ooh, a pixel. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, do I know what I'm talking about? Right. Right. Um, you know, but, but I think that's where, where everything is headed in and using that strategy or best practices to get out of it the most that you can get out of it, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so last question, um, and this is again, a broad topic, but yeah. you know, with, with where we are with going through COVID coming out of COVID, everything that's kind of going towards that online platform, you know, where do you see social media heading to in 2021 and the future? You know, what platforms are going to be hot? Um, is there, you know, something that's kind of taking over the industry that, that we don't know about? I mean, where do you see things heading in the future? I mean, I think Instagram's continuing to grow. I think that's a huge platform. If, if, if folks are not yet uh, dialed into Instagram, that's definitely one that I would say, you know, it's time to, time to pay attention to. I mean, just the, the features that Instagram has added over the last few months and years, really, it's not just the feed, it's Instagram stories, it's, it's IG TV, it's Instagram live, it's um, Instagram ads. Like there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of opportunities there sort of, uh, you know, it's, it's a great piece of real estate, no pun intended. <laughs> so I do think that that's, that's only going to grow and expand. Um, I also think it'll be really interesting to see what happens with TikTok. Uh, you know, you I, and me both. I, you know I, 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 I don't have a crystal ball, of course, like we always say, but uh, I, I, you know, I, 
I, a lot of people will say, you know, is that relevant for real estate? Again, it depends. You know, it depends on are your clients hanging out there? Is that a place where your, your demographic is? And I think TikTok first started out skewed really, really young. Um, and so it was kind of an automatic, like, for me, no, this probably isn't for real estate. But it's evolved and changed. And we see people of all different ages and backgrounds on there now. And so we'll see. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I think it's one to kind of keep an eye on uh, mm-hmm. and to see how that, how that evolves. But if anything, it just kind of proves my point about video. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because yeah, that whole platform, yeah. if you haven't seen it, uh, those of you watching, uh, you know, it's all it's all video. Um, and yeah. so the creativity that's on there, too, is, is pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. It is amazing. And you see some of these kids that are so young doing this video work that it's like I'm jealous of these tweens that are putting out right. these videos, you know. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I really appreciate the time that you've spent with us today. If people wanted to to find you online or connect with you, where's the best place to find you, Katie? Best place is just my website, katielance.com, K-A-T-I-E-L-A-N-C-E.com. We have hundreds of free resources on our site. And then, of course, you can connect me with me on, on social media. I'm at Katie Lance just about everywhere <laughs> on social media. <laughs> and make sure that you watch Katie Lance's YouTube videos. They're, they are, I love how they're bite size. They give great tips um, and also listen to your podcast. So I just want to throw that out there as well. So thank you so much, Katie. I really appreciate your time. And this was, this was great to talk to you. Thank you so much, Jason. It was great to be here today. All right, that was our conversation with Katie Lance. And as you can see, there was a lot packed into that conversation. I hope that you will take all of these tips away from from what we talked about today. But even if you take just two or three away from, from what you just heard, it's going to help your business. So just a couple of things that I wanted to touch on. Number one, Katie, time and time again, talks about video. And anybody who is anybody in social media now knows that video is vitally important to your business. So if you don't do video, that's okay. But you may want to think about getting started with that. And in the beginning, you're always going to screw up. You may feel uncomfortable, but it's about pushing those boundaries and, and getting yourself outside you know, your, your normal routine and learning a new skill. So think of it that way. It's okay to screw up. The, the important part is just to begin. Number two. Think about evergreen content. Now, evergreen content is just a fancy way of saying timeless content. What is timeless content? That is um, something that, you know, you have clients time and time again that ask you questions over and over about the same thing, right? So brainstorm, what kind of questions do my clients ask me all the time? And then make a short video about it. Um, It could be, what questions do you get asked about, you know, what are typical home inspections that buyers do? What type of financing is there and what does that mean? You could do short videos on all these things and then get it out there to the masses. It's timeless content. Number three, Facebook favors conversations. So you want to post something that is going to start a conversation now and not just a yes or a no answer. It has to be a complete sentence. So you may want to ask an open-ended question. You may post a video that starts a conversation, but that is what is going to get seen now on Facebook. So always try and start a conversation if you can in the comment section with your posts. Number four, post things that sound like you. And this is really important because I think as realtors, all of us use automation into our business. And it's it's great to set it and forget it that you have somebody that is going to automatically post stuff on social media for you. But you don't want to lose your voice. Your voice is you. It's what makes you unique and it's what makes clients know, like, and trust us. So when it comes to social media, make sure that you're posting your content, not just automation, but something that comes from you. And remember, Katie says, your life is content. So look at your life. What can you post from day to day? And think about, you know, pulling something. It could be a behind the scenes at an inspection. It could be something that happens in the office. It could be just something, you know, that happens in your life. Pets, relatives, all that stuff. Look at your life as content and what you can pull from that every day and post and make it original. So that's about it. Uh, I really hope that you like this week's podcast. We'll be back in a couple weeks with some new guests. 
And if you have any topics that you want me to cover, as always, you can reach me at jason.ostrowski at foxroach.com. I look forward to hearing your feedback. Don't be afraid to leave us a review on iTunes or Google Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And that concludes this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed listening. We'll see you in a couple weeks on our next Everything Real Estate Podcast. Podcast.